Welcome to the End Time Sanctuary Present Truth Ministries. Our topic today, I have entitled it, The Most Devastating and Painful Truths About the Foolish Virgins. This topic is so interesting because Jesus, after his sermon on the signs of the end of the world, proceeded how to prepare. And so we find these two groups of believers, the wise and the foolish virgins. So this is a study on Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. So this topic has been preached here hundred times, yet never taken seriously into consideration and action. The truth in the parable of the wise and foolish virgins is so clear in us that only very few did it. It is so simple yet so profound. The saddest of all things is that everybody assumes that they are the wise virgins, not the foolish. Human nature in religious practices, people always think sure that we are on the side of God. But the truth is, even those of an own Christians, they think of lapses of spirituality, backsliders, or vacation on leave from church, much more with the active ones. It is too difficult and almost impossible to identify with the foolish virgins. Nobody had the slightest idea of entering into being a foolish or accept as the possible candidate as a foolish virgins. Why? To accept as likely candidate as foolish virgin is religiously too brutal, psychotic, humiliating, and human, dehumanizing. So that's really the mindset of a lot of Christians. We are the wise virgins, not the foolish. That's why this truth, no Christian wants to hear that when someone will preach, you are likely the candidate. These are the truths in the end time that nobody wants to hear in the sermon. As Christians, followers of Christ, it is easy to deny that we are not the foolish virgins, but ready to assert that we are the wise virgins. Even negate many of us are not really the foolish virgins, Builder, but we affirm positively that we are the wise. Many defend and oppose that we are not the false disciples, but attest that we are the true, and even disprove by all means that we are not the tears, but approve that we are the way. And neither admit that we are the goats, but maintain that we are the sheep. This is what most Christians want to hear. But the words of Jesus do not square with what we want to hear. But he speaks of the reality of truth, which are hurting, painful truth. Why not ask personal serious questions? In what ways I would be a foolish virgin? That is very deep questions. So, let me ask some questions. Important questions. How many have examined their spiritual condition and relationship to God and Christ that they can attest that they are not the foolish virgins? Have you considered this in time typological parable that either you and I are likely the possible candidate of a foolish virgin. Have you spiritually discerned the common similarity and the distinct differences between the wise and the foolish? 
Have you noticed by experience that sometimes we live and act as wise but many times as foolish virgins? Have we considered the time and opportunity of beca becoming more difficult in making personal preparation for Christ's coming? Are you prepared to accept? The devastating declaration of Jesus that years of spending life and times in church, he tells you, I do not know you. If not, come with me. Let us study and be ready to know whether you are wise or foolish. Many people who are religious are Serious about their feelings and emotions. And so, we are all Christians. Our names are in the church records, books. We attend regular worship services. We give our time and talents and treasure in church. We are involved ourselves in religious activities, in doing mission of the church. Then we have the feelings and emotions that all these indicators guarantee our security of salvation. This is the foolish virgin's mindset and attitude. Salvation is not based on feelings and emotions. We are not to rest the idea that because we are members of the church, we are saved. While we give no evidence that we are conformed to the image of Christ, while we cling to our world habits, weave our fabric with the threads of worldly ideas and customs. So we need to understand our feelings is not the criteria and emotions that we are sure. The truth is, is that now the wise and the foolish virgins are now sitting together in church. But one day, there must be a separation forever. Now the wheat and the tares, together growing in the church, but time will come to be separated forever. The true and false disciples together now in fellowship of the church, but angels in the end will separate them forever. And so, even the sheep and the goat now is in the church, in the fold of God. But time will come. They will be separated eternally. And so, even the wise and the foolish builders inside the church are together. But in the end, we will understand that there are really ending of who are really the wise and the foolish builders in the end of time. And so, I want to share with you to study the kinds of fools associated with spiritual things. The fool in Matthew 5, 22, in Greek is more, from the word moron, meaning mental deficient. Or also intellectual disability. It also means lacking grip on reality. The same term is used in Matthew 25, verse 2. The foolish virgin. So it comes from the word more. Moron. Mental deficient. Intellectual disability. Lacking the grip of reality of spiritual things. So... This is also found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 14, the word foolishness, moria. The significance is that on the context of last day event, or it is just before Christ come. 
So, the full also, the full is in Matthew 24, 25 is anointoi in Greek. From anointus. It's the same word used in Galatians by Paul in Galatians 3, 1. I know it is, anointus means a full failure to use mental and spiritual powers properly. Meaning to say, they have the ca mental capacity, but they are not using it to the fullness. Therefore, the deficiency is not an IQ, but is Q, spiritual quotients or spiritual intelligence, hence, slow to believe. So, the most dangerous of all fool is the spiritual. The fool in Luke 12, 20 is apron. From the word pren means sense, size of things, inner look, discreet. So apron means no sense or senseless. The lack of common sense or no reason, reckless. One of mental sanity and sobriety. The same word is used in Luke 11.40 and 2 Corinthians 11.19. Then we look at the falls in Romans chapter 1 verse 21 and chapter 10 verse 19. The Greek word there of the fall is asunitos, meaning lack of deep discernment. From the word sunetos, mental intelligence and sopos means wise, the practical skills or acumen. So anoitos means lack of deep spiritual discernment about reality. So the foolish virgins is the most dangerous. Hence, it is a description of that is too dark, mental deficient reality of spirituality. So let's compare now the biblical understanding of a wise and a fool. Most of them are in the book of Proverbs. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. That is foolish. Proverbs 1, seven. A fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. Proverbs 18.2 The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he who heeds the counsel is wise. So there is a comparison between the wise and the fool. And when we understand this one, this coincide to the foolish and the wise virgins in Matthew 25. Words of the wise spoken quietly should be heard rather than the shout of ruler of fools. The Ecclesiastes 9.17 Even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace, but he shut his lip is considered perceptive. Proverbs 17.28 That's why I say it's better for you to keep quiet rather than talking so that People will think you are wise, but if you talk, your foolishness is clearly seen. Proverbs 15, 20, 20, 15, verses 20 and 21. A wise son makes his father glad, but a foolish man despise, despises his mother. Fully is the joy of him who is destitute of discernment. Did you understand now that we look at that in Greek? But a man of understanding walks uprightly. So, the wise and the fools are distinguished by their own decision and ends of their works. So, a wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart is on the left. Ecclesiastes 10.2 He who walks with the wise will become wise, but he is companions of Fools will be destroyed. We look at the ending because this is really in, in harmony with the wise and the foolish virgins. So a wise man fears and depa departs from evil, but a fool rages and he is self-confident. 
Proverbs 14, 16. The wise in his heart receive commands, but prating fool will fall. Proverbs 10, verse 8. So, in fact, Proverbs says, Go from the presence of a foolish man. When you do not perceive him in his lips, knowledge, the wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the fully of the false deceit. False mock at sin, but among the upright there is favor. Proverbs 14, 7 to 9. So, in fact, it continues to say, He who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but whoever walks wisely will be delivered. So here is the understanding of comparison between the wise and the foolish. A fool bends all his feeling, but a wise man holds back. Proverbs 29, 11. So the wise shall inherit the glory, but shame shall be the legacy of the fools. So we have looked at now the characteristics, the decision of the wise and the fools, their works and their end. So it is so important that we need to look at it in the context of the ten virgins. So in the parable of the ten virgins, Jesus himself was the eyewitness of this event. This parable was not invented because it really happens in Mount Olympus. Israel and other Eastern nations at that time, the wedding took place at evening. So let's see, look at the pen of inspiration. In the scene upon which Christ looks, a company are one awaiting the appearance of the bridal party, intending to join the procession. Lingering near the bride's house are ten young women robed in a white all anxiously watching for the appearance of the bridegroom, but there is a delay. Hour after hour passes, the watcher become weary and fall asleep. Christ Object Lessons 406. Why I'm so interested? Because I was sitting in Mount Olives, in the crest of Mount Olives. We're so close to Bethany where Jesus ascended to heaven. So if you find on this picture that I had, this is the, the seven uh, pillars. I was not able to get inside because it was already 12 o'clock and it was closed, so I was not able to get inside. But down on the crest of Mount Olive is the cemetery. And before the cemetery in Gethsemane, we find this church building the church of all nations and then in front of this is a road or a highway that is between the ancient eastern gate going to the temple of jerusalem is the kidron valley and at, during the time of jesus there was a called the kidron kidron brook or river so i was so close and i was so interested why because these are reality what Jesus had spoken in, in, the, in the parables of the wise and ten virgins, it comes vivid to my mind because I sat in Mount Olives where it happened. But after that, I went into Mount Sion and then I took the picture of the ancient uh, location of the temple. So, why am I interested with that? First, this parable is for the entire. Eleanor White says, As Christ looking upon the party that awaited for the bridegroom, he told his disciples the story of ten virgins by their experience, illustrating the experience of the church that shall live just before the second coming. So this class represented by foolish virgins represent also those in hearers of God's word, but the word of God fall into the stony places. And so Paul is saying, let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you who seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. Here is a challenge of Paul. Because there were foolish virgins thinking in the time of Jesus. 
as we have seen. Okay? Before he was crucified, there were people whose thinking was like a foolish virgin. If you, if you look at Judy, the history there, recorded in Matthew 21, verses 1 to 10, Mark 1, verses 1 to 10, Luke 19, verses 29 to 44, and John 12, 12 to 49, this speak about the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ. What happened there? Okay? So, why we are interested with that? Because we are represented either by a wife, by the wise or the foolish virgins, and there are many who will not remain at the feet of Jesus and learn of him. They have not knowledge of his ways. These are the foolish virgins. They are not prepared for his coming. They have made pretense of waiting the Lord, but they have not watched and prayed that faith that works by love that purifies the soul. They live a life of carelessness. They have heard and assented to the truth, but they never brought into their practical life. The oil of grace is not feeding their lamp, and they are not prepared to enter into the marriage supper of the lamb. Maranatha, page 54. So it is also symbolizing those enthusiasm, enthusiastic disciples. You know, when Jesus keep on walking for three years and a half, but at this time, the disciple was happy. And many of those who followed Jesus. So let's just look at what the pen of inspiration says. The disciples with glad enthusiasm spread the garments of the beast and set to their master upon it. Hence the four Jesus had always traveled on foot and the disciple had at first wondered why he chose to ride. But hope brightened their hearts with joyous thought that he was about to enter the capital proclaiming himself a king and assert the royal power. While in Iran, they communicate the glowing expectation to the friends of Jesus and the excitement spread far and near, rising the expectation of the people of the highest pitch. This are is 570 reason. Because at that particular time, we have understood that an Aaron, people at the time was so, so many, and that people are spreading like a wildfire that Jesus will be proclaimed as a king. And then, as they look at it, that Jesus was Riding on a horse, they have understood that's the way how Israel come in understanding of their king. And so what happened was, it was a wild fire. Everybody joined. Small children, men joined the procession. Why? Jesus would be crowned as king. However, because the Jewish custom was that the royal entry when people got so excited because they have no king since Babylonian captivity and so what happened was that no sooner it says no sooner as he was seated upon the call that a loud and shout triumph rent in the air multitude hailed him Messiah their king Jesus now accepted the homage which he had never permitted before. And the disciples received this as a proof their glad hopes were realized by seeing him established on the throne. The multitude were convinced that the hour of their emancipation was at hand. In imagination, they saw the Roman armies driven from Jerusalem and all Israel once more an independent nation. All are happy, excited. The people bade with one another, paying homage. 
So the description is so beautiful. Why? Because they long for a king. 500, more than 500 years they don't have a king. And now Jesus riding on the call. And so as we have understood here, then as he now drawing near the descent of Mount Olives, multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all mighty works they had been saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Luke 19, 37 and 38. Meaning, we have seen here the problem. That people were following emotions. Their feelings that Jesus now will receive. Because there was an attempt that he would be crowned by force as a king. But now he voluntarily now came and rode a donkey, a symbol of a lowly king of Israel. But the problem was that they were disappointed. Why? Jesus is only up to the crest of Mount Olive. Let's read in Luke. Now as he drew near, he saw the city. Weep over it, saying, if you have known, even especially to your day, these things makes you peace. Luke 19, 41, 42. And everything suddenly stopped. Why? He did not descend from the crest of Mount Olive to Kidron Valley to Gethsemane, neither enter in the eastern gate. So these people moved by impulse. Feelings and emotion. Their fears had been excited by the solemn message. But they depended upon their faith on their brethren. This is what Ellen White said. Satisfied with flickering light of good emotions without thorough understanding of the truth or genuine work of grace in the heart. They had gone forth to meet the Lord full of hope in the prospect of immediate reward, but they were not prepared for the delay and the disappointment. Then trials came, their faith failed, and their lights burned them. Recontroversy 394. Here we saw that at the time of Jesus, people were so excited. However, they based their understanding on feelings and emotion, and they were disappointed, and some of them sad to say, are Jesus, were Jesus' disciples. So, the foolish and wise virgins. It happened also in 1844. According to Ellen White, the great controversy, the class received grace of God, regenerating, enlightening power of the Holy Spirit, renders the word a lamb to the feet and light to the path. In the fear of God, they had studied the scripture, learned the truth, had earnestly sought to purify a heart and personal experience, a faith in God and his word, which could not be overthrown by the disappointment and delay. These are the wise. Did you understand that during the time of Miller, millions of people were sickened throughout the whole world, abandoned their farms and all their business because Jesus was coming. But when Jesus did not appear, out of those thousands, only a handful remained faithful and they were called the remnant reason because they just follow feelings and emotions and they were disappointed and that is the experience in history. Here is a simple lamb. I went to Nazareth and found this one. This is what they have done. So there's a simple what is, what is important here is we need to have a distinct difference understanding between the two. The foolish in this time of uncertainty and interest of superficial, half-hearted, soon began to waver their efforts to relax. But the wise, but whose faith was based on personal knowledge of the Bible had a rock beneath their feet. The waves of disappointment could not wash away. One class 
the foolish, is unconcern and abandonment of their faith, the other class, the wise, patiently waiting clear until the clearer light should be given. That's what happened in 1844. And it will happen in the end time. So we need to look at how these wise and foolish virgins understood. In the Great Controversy 395, Ellen White says, Yet the night of trial, the foolish seems to lose to some extent their seal and devotion. The half-hearted, the superficial could no longer learn upon the faith of their brethren. Each must stand or fall for himself. So, the lamb is the eye of the body. If therefore your eyes is good, Jesus says, your whole body will fall of light. But if your eye, that is, a spiritual eye, discernment is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Therefore, the light that is in you is darkness. How great is that darkness? Jesus is saying, to the foolish virgins, this seems light. But in the end, it was found out it was really a dense darkness. So, we need to look at really who are days in the end. Let's compare. For a time, there was no difference between them. Where did in the church, they just live before the second coming. Okay? The ten virgins all desired to meet the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. Verse 1. All have lambs and oil, Matthew 25, verse 4. All have trimmed their lambs and all have slept. They are in church together almost the same. Together they have done the same works of preparation, but the delay which was to alarm them of what other necessary things to be checked and more preparation. This is especially about the oil of their lambs. Lambs are useless without oil since it was night, meaning difficult time and circumstances. So, what was crucial was the extra oil. The coming was delayed and the time was expected the groom to arrive. He had not arrived. So it was the time when he came when nobody expected because it was midnight. According to Matthew 24, 42, 44, 50. It's really sudden. Christ's object lesson says, all have knowledge of scripture. All have heard the messages of Christ near coming and confidently expect his appearing but the five were wanting. Five were found surprised, dismayed outside the banquet hall. Christ's object lesson 410. So the ten virgins are watching in the evening of earth history. All claims to be Christians. All have a call, a name, a lamb. All profess to be doing God's service. But a time of waiting intervenes. Faith is tried. They are not ready. They have no oil in their vessels with their lambs. They are destitute of Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit of God, a knowledge of His Word is of no avail. Without enlightenment of the Holy Spirit, men will, distinguish, will not distinguish between truth and error, and they will fall under the masterful temptations of Satan. This class, represented by foolish virgins, are not hypocrites. They have regard the truth. They have advocated the truth. They are attracted to those who believe the truth, but they have not yielded themselves to the Holy Spirit working. They, are, they, have, fallen, they have not fallen into the rock of Christ and permitted the old nature to be broken up. So the foolish virgins represented by that who received the word of God but fail in assimilating in principle, influence is not abiding. The spirit works upon 
man's heart according to his desire and consent in implanting him the nature. But this class represented by a foolish virgins had been content with superficial work. They do not know God. They have not studied God's character. They have not healed communion with him. Therefore, they do not know how to trust, how to look and live. Their service to God degenerates into a form or formalism. That's why Jesus says, take, take heed, therefore, that the light which is in you is not darkness. Luke 11.35 So, it says here in this Ayurveda, it's a long passage. In our association with one another, we should take heed lest we forget Jesus. And pass along and mindful, he is not with us. When we become absorbed of worldly things so that we have no thought of him, in whom our hope or eternal life is centered, we separate ourselves from Jesus and from holy angels. And these holy beings cannot remain where the Savior's presence is not there. Many attend religious services. And refreshed and comported by the word of God. But through neglect of meditations, watchfulness, prayer, they lost the blessing. And find themselves destitute than before they received it. Often they feel that God has dealt hardly with them. They do not see the fault that is their own. By separating themselves from Jesus, they have shut away the light of his presence. Desire of Ages, page 83. So the foolish virgins also keep the Sabbath. The Ten Commandments. There is no difference. But let's look what the pen of inspiration says. Not all who profess to keep the Sabbath will be sealed. There are many among those who teach the truth to others who will not receive the seal of God in their foreheads. They had the light of truth. They knew the master's will. They understood every point of Adventist faith, but they have not corresponding works. These who are so familiar with prophecy, the treasure of divine wisdom should have acted their faith. This statement is volume 5, 211. The bad news is that they cannot receive the seal of God. The complacent, the careless Sabbath keepers, here is a warning. The class who do not feel grave over their own spiritual declension, nor mourn over the sins of others, will be left without the seal of God. Testimonies, volume 5, pages 211. The seal of God will never be placed upon a forehead of an impure man or woman. It will never be placed upon the forehead of the ambitious, word-loving man and woman. It will never be placed upon the forehead of men and women of false tongues, deceitful hearts. All who receive the seal must be without spot before God candidates for heaven. Testimonies, Volume 5, 216. This is painful. This is devastating. Why? You keep the commandments. You do the participation of mission and all of these things. But yet, we have not assimilated the chains of divine nature. Our mind still worldly. And we are not purged from that worldliness. So the biblical characteristics of the foolish virgin. So, according to Ezekiel, so they come to you as a people. They sit before you as my people and they hear your words, but they do not do them. For their mouth, they show much love, but their heart pursue their own gain. Because the foolish virgins is a principle that Jesus took it from Ezekiel. But know this, Paul says, in the last days, perilous time will come. For men will become lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemer, disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, 
headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. 2 Timothy 3, 1, 15. This is the church. It is not outside. So this is the characteristics of the foolish virgin inside the church, but the character deny that they have Jesus Christ. This testimony is volume 5, 211 said, They should have commanded their household in them, well-ordered family that they might present to the world the influence of truth upon human heart by their lack of devotion and piety, their failure to reach a higher religious standard, they make others all contented with their position. Not one of us will ever receive the seal of God while our character have one spot or stain upon them. It is left for us to remedy the seal of God. The defects of our character cleanse the soul temple in every defilement. Then the latter rain will fall upon us as early rain fail upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost. Not enough preparation has been taken for granted and neglected. This is the problem of the foolish virgins. Ellen White, viewing in the end, he says, The servants of God, with their faces lighted up with shining with holy consecration, will hasten from place to place, proclaim the message of heaven by thousands of voices all over the earth. The warning will be given, thus the inhabitants of the earth will be brought to take their stand. Look at the wise virgins. A large class take their stand upon the Lord's side. Read Controversy 6.12. But look at the foolish virgins. As the storm, storm approaches, a large class who profess faith in the third angel's messages but have not been sanctified through obedience of the truth, abandon their position and join the rank of opposition. By uniting the world, by partaking its spirit, they come to view matters nearly in the same light. When the test is brought, they are prepared to choose easy, popular side. They become the most bitterest enemy of their former brethren. Great controversy 608. So, the foolish virgin's only hope before Christ is to repent. Like the Laodicean. The spiritual condition of the foolish virgins is like the Laodicean church. Because you say, I'm rich. I have become wealthy. I have need of nothing and do not know that you are rich, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire that you may be rich and garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with an eye sub that you may see. As many as I have loved, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be jealous and repent. And behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, opens the door, I will come to him and dine with him and he with me. Revelation 21, okay? No, 18, 17 to 21. So the invitation still open before the provision closes. Because the state of, this, of the foolish virgins is exactly like the church of the Laodiceans who did not listen to Christ's counsel because they think they are really in it. And so I want to end up this presentation. This is the most devastating, painful truth about the Foolish virgins. In the end, Jesus says, I do not know you. Meaning to say, my brothers and sisters, it means to say, we have to look at carefully that we as a Christians, we have to determine by all means that we are not the foolish one who will receive devastating and painful truths in the end by which we serve God while we are on earth. But when he comes, 
God will declare, I do not know you. It's a solemn message because one day there is a separation. We have presented that in the end time, foolish and the wise will be separated forever. Today, ask personal question. In what ways that I am not the foolish virgins? And in what ways also that I am really the wise virgins? May the Lord bless you as you contemplate the serious matters that bring us in our respective personal destiny in the end. May the Lord bless us. This is my prayer. Thank you.